Today on Bridges, you'll get to meet someone who went through three abusive marriages, three divorces, and she's going to tell us about her quest for exceptional love. I'm Monica Schmelter, and my guest today is Darla Collinette, and I want to welcome you to Bridges. Darla is going to be very brave today and share us with us her story of enduring three abusive marriages and three divorces, and then really finding out what true love really is all about. And Darla, it's so good to have you on the program today. Thank you, Monica, for having me here. It is just such an honor and a privilege for me. Well, I think it's such an important subject, Darla, and I'm glad that you're gonna tell it to us personally and that, that you penned really your journey in this book, Quest for Exceptional Love, and the subtitle, Transform Your Love and Relationships Through Christ Love Design. And I think probably, Darla, in some form or fashion, we're all on a quest for exceptional love, and yeah. yet, you found yourself on that search, but you went through three abusive marriages. Tell us about that. Well, I'm either a slow learner or I'm <laughs> persistent <laughs> to find love. And I, I would like to say the other, you know, for me, it's that persistency. As a young girl growing up in a, a, a somewhat dysfunctional home, my parents were Christians, but they're very broken and um, didn't find the healing. And it left a lot of holes in my heart. Mm -hmm. It left abandonment. It left me feeling love starved uh, most of my life and just determined, how do I fix that? Right, right. And I'm so glad, uh, you know, that you mentioned, you know, that your parents were Christian and yet yes. there's a lot of brokenness. And I think yes. that's the first thing that most of us, even as believers in Christ, have a lot of brokenness in our lives. Yes. And we somehow think that accepting Christ and praying that prayer that we're just gonna become immediately whole and understand what it's all about. Is that how it works? I think that's how we assume it, <laughs> right? you know, subconsciously. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot like um, fairy tales with, you know, the fairy godmother that just ding hits you and you right. know, you're perfectly fine. You have mm -hmm. this beautiful dress and everything's wonderful in your mm -hmm. life. But we're not taught that that's not the way it is. Right. God tells us we're a new creation when we're saved. However, he doesn't show us, um, through, or the church doesn't really do a good job of showing us that what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. Our salvation is gift, but now it's up to us to say, okay, how do we grow that? What does that mean to live in Christ? Mm -hmm. How does that look to love like Christ? Right. And I think that was one of my biggest assumptions that I realized in my quest and just looking at my life was the fact that I had assumed when I was saved at seven, that I knew Christ's love then. So I would know how to love like Christ, others would love me, life would be terrific. Mm -hmm. But that was far from anything I had known. Right. You know. Yeah, and I don't think that your journey is all that uncommon. No. I, I don't at all. I remember that I, I gave my heart to Christ at 13. Mm -hmm. And so what I imagined would happen would be, now my family didn't go to church at that time, but I looked at all the other families in church and I thought, okay, so now that I've made this commitment, I am just going to have this beautiful life and yeah. it's just all going to work out. And it has been a beautiful life, but not at all the way that I imagined. I, I soon came to find that yes, when you give your heart to Christ, you are instantly saved mm -hmm. and made a new creation. But there's growth, there's maturity, yes. there's a lot to be walked out. And at first my struggle was, I must be doing this all wrong. Like these people all look so happy and yes. here I am, broken Monica. And it, it took me years and, and I'm still unpacking all of that. <laughs> Yes. But one of the reasons, Darla, that I wanted to have you on so much, and again, the name of her book is Quest for Exceptional Love. It's about being able to transform your love and relationships through Christ's love design, is to share your personal story because sometimes people tell these things in expert sort of ways. And, yes. you know, then everybody's like, okay, well, that's good for you, but I'm just a real person. And you've really endured a lot in your years. So maybe yeah. we, maybe you could talk a little bit about your personal experience and how that led you to the wholeness that you're experiencing now. I, 
My mom had um, mental illness when I was young, and um, I was actually raised in Iran for the first almost six and a half years of my life. Wow. Um, my dad was in the Air Force, so he was absent a lot. But again, that brought a lot of brokenness and a lot of pain and strife. And then we moved to the United States, and that, although that was glorious and freedom, mm -hmm. But then here I was again with all this new, and then my mom was sick and not having our maid to take care of us anymore, you know, who was my mother. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of loss in my life, a lot of, of things. Even early though, on. Early, early on. And even though um, at seven, I accepted Christ and I knew Jesus would always be with me because I heard that voice mm -hmm. no matter what. And so I always felt like, okay, no matter what, I at least have Jesus. Right. And so I came to trust Jesus, somebody I couldn't see more than I could trust people I could mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. which is kind of opposite for people. Right. And then just not having anybody to rely on my entire life. I wasn't raised with grandparents, cousins, you know, so it was, my family was very set apart. And so you go through this and then you go through your teenage years and feeling that love starved and abandoned and at 15, I was date raped. And that was horrible I'm and tragic. So but what was really, really tough for me was when I came home looking for protection from my dad mm -hmm. and, you know, um, comfort. Instead, he looked at me because he didn't know what to say and said, you know, what did you do to cause this? And now that you're damaged, who's mm -hmm. going to love you? And at 15, that just was like shattering. Mm -hmm just shattering. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I share this is because we all need to know that things in our lives, childhood, teenage years, being bullied, all these things rip at our identity, yes, who they do. we are and our value. Mm -hmm. And so then you go into this tailspin when you feel like you need to be loved. Yeah. And that's when you go searching. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I read that on your website where you mm -hmm. told that story about being date raped. And I, I think there's something about our human nature, and it's not yes. a good thing, that we always want to find out what the person that was harmed, like what he or what she could have done to make all of this happen. Because it's like if we believe right. that lie, right, right, then nothing bad will ever happen to us because we're going to protect ourselves. And we don't open our hearts to the truth that in a broken world, yes. a person that isn't asking for trouble, that isn't doing anything wrong, could be date raped or any number of things. And then, you know, your poor dad was probably hurting and scared and, yes, and said, you know, said all the wrong things. Yeah. And then you're left, not only were you harmed physically and sexually by someone that at least you liked and trusted enough to go on a date. Yeah. Now you're dealing with what your dad said. Yeah. So now you're like really in this tailspin being mm -hmm. love starved. And so I can only imagine that when you went to get married, you just thought, oh, he'll love me and this will be wonderful. Well, I felt lucky to ever even have somebody look at me because, you know, I was damaged. And so that oh. threw me into my marriage at 18. So that was very young. But given my home life and everything else, it was just, I felt like right. that was my only chance to get out and mm -hmm. do this. I think too, for me, assumptions. Um, the kid that I went out with on the date at 15 was a Christian. You would think you could trust that. Absolutely. Again, would. anybody who professes to be a Christian, you think, mm -hmm. okay, if we get married, then it's gonna be okay. Right. There's an extra safety, mm -hmm. but we don't even realize really what that means mm -hmm. to us or we don't even ask our spouse or the person next to us say, what does it really mean to love someone to you? You know, how does that look? How does that feel? Right. Um, and in, in my circumstances, so growing up, having to stuff my feelings and just put up with things, I came to marriage and relationships with the concept that I had to accept being hurt and misused because to me that equated love or attention, which was better than nothing. Right, right. So, so I think that's where we really have to look at our relationships. If you grew up in families where you could scream and yell at each other and blow off steam or throw things across the room as long as you apologize right. in a Christian <laughs> home, then everything's okay. Well, it's not because that creates an unhealthy form of love and mm -hmm. walks right into being either a victim of abuse mm -hmm. or an abuser mm -hmm. and not even intentionally. Right. I, I think for most people, probably not yes. for all, 
most people don't enter marriage or friendships or dating with the idea of, I'm really gonna hurt, manipulate, Absolutely. shame. Most people are not doing that. Mm -hmm. We are acting out what we've seen and what we've learned. And then yes. when we become Christians, we do have that safe expectation. I mean, I thought that. I can remember mm -hmm. that I went like on a group date situation after I became a, like I was about 15 or so. And I ended up having to call my parents because it was not a safe situation, but I didn't ask enough questions because it was people from my youth group. Yeah. And I thought that I would be safe. I thought that it would be okay. Now, thankfully, when I saw it all going wrong, yeah. I had enough guts to call yeah, my no. parents, but I was scared to call them. Yeah. And um, I think that night could have gone way differently had I not, and I feel my heart just goes out to all the people that yeah. don't have enough guts to call because I, I second guessed myself a lot. I wondered mm -hmm. if I would be made fun of, if I would mm -hmm. be shamed in the youth group and, and all of that. And so I think if I hear, hear what you're saying properly and what you talk about in the book is that we need to ask more questions. Absolutely. We need to ask more questions, but first we need to ask them of ourselves. Yeah. You know, what is our definition of love? And we are all born into sin because of Adam's sin. Right. So we start forming our broken love design or imperfect one from birth. And that comes from the messages we hear, that comes from our beliefs, that comes from what we consider um, love according to Christ and marriage and those kinds of things. You know, it, it involves fantasies. You know, I fall in love, live happily ever after. You know, it involves all these things that are in the imperfect imper world. Mm -hmm. So we begin our love like that. And unfortunately, people are like computers. We can only use what programming we have yeah. in us. And so we have all that imperfectness. And with a little tweaks here and a little tweaks there of, of Christ popping in, you know, with, with knowledge <laughs> and, and, you know, and some things we learn along the way. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's, it's a right. messed up mess. Right. But then we assume we're just gonna love like Christ. Yeah. And so that's why you have to be self-aware first, then know what Christ's love it really does mean, and then you can walk And then in begin it. to walk in that. So we've gotta take a break. We want you to stay with us, and when we come back on Bridges, we'll continue to talk about Quest for Exceptional Love. If you're looking for ways to grow your faith, we invite you to go to monicaschmelzer.com where you can watch Bridges interviews and Monica's teachings on demand. You'll also find free online extras that offer practical ways to live out your faith. Visit monicaschmelzer.com where you'll find hope because truth changes everything. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on Bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we are talking about the quest for exceptional love. And there's some really good news here. We're talking about how you can transform your love and relationships through Christ love, love's design. We don't have to live in abusive and unhealthy relationships. And my guest today, Darla Colinette, has a lot of experience with abusive relationships and most, more importantly, has really found Christ's love design and really is helping all of us be able to live out healthier and better relationships. So Darla, we talked about, you know, in the first segment, you went through three abusive marriages as a yes. Christian, three divorces, and then you began to see that really you've got a lot of missing pieces. Your spirit was born again, but you didn't have yes. everything that you needed. And I think probably so many people that are watching are in a, the same situation. It's an unhealthy relationship, it's abusive, but the person just feels like if they could just work harder, if they could do more, if they could pray harder. But I think what you're saying is maybe that's not it. No, that's not it. <laughs> What's amazing to me throughout all of my journey is just understanding those missing pieces. Satan had me believing that there was something wrong with me, that I was faulty, that there was missing. Uh, you know, I was, I was just not smart enough mm -hmm. and I didn't deserve it. 
I didn't deserve to be loved. And then as Christ showed me that I was right in my spirit but missing all these pieces, he started showing me this path of, again, the self-awareness that we have to be aware of. Where where are we being tripped up by the enemy? Mm -hmm. What is the enemy using? He used my um, feeling love starved to pull me into relationships that were not healthy. And the fact that I didn't know what healthy relationships look like, what, what unhealthy relationships look like. I was never taught types of abuse, signs of abuse. Um, I was never taught how we can assume things as a Christian and then we're caught in traps that we just right. don't even see. Right. And then we get into misused scripture um, out of context. And especially during my first marriage in the 80s, I went to several pastors and told them what was going on, which was very, very Were you abusive. honest with oh, it? Like you said? Very honest. Okay. The physical abuse, everything that was going on. And they looked at me and said, you are married to, you know, you're married now, you have to submit to your husband, doesn't matter what happens. And in my soul, everything screamed and said, that's not God's love. Mm -hmm. That's just not God's love. What's interesting with each marriage is I ended up trading, I call it trading up. And we do this in our life, oh, and about everything we do. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you know, that didn't work so good, but this looks better, this mm -hmm. looks better, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was in a less abusive relationship mm -hmm. in the sense. So I was, you know, we learned slowly, but the problem is with those missing pieces, the cost of what we learn and go through is tragic right. and terrible. Right, because so. you're here today telling your story of having found Christ yeah. in the, in His love design right. being transformed. There are probably people that are watching who right now also feel like damaged goods, faulty, like they can't do yeah. anything right. They might have gone to a pastor or a trusted friend and said, I'm being physically abused. Um, I know that I heard a sermon once at, that Really, I just couldn't even believe it was said from the pulpit. But what the pastor said was, well, if your husband cheats, you forgive him. Yes. You forgive and you yeah. forget it. And if he does it again, you forgive and forget it again. Yes. And I'm thinking, but that's not anywhere in Scripture. No. That's just what we're saying. And, yeah. you know, there are people who will sit in the pews or the chairs and hear that. And then now not, not only are they being abused, but there's the spiritual abuse now yes. too. Yes. So now not only is it so bad what's going on at home, they also feel like this yeah. is what God expects, so I've just got to keep doing it. Yes, yes. And, and I, I mean, I see that over and over with thousands of women I've talked to. I also believe there are a lot of struggling Christian marriages that don't even realize they're being abusive. Right. Verbal abuse is just abundant everywhere. I mean, if you're saying anything disrespecting, dishonoring Absolutely. to your spouse, you're being verbally abusive. Absolutely. Now, that's not to say you're going to hell and all your marriage is over and, you know, don't be dramatic about it. But it's a wake up call to, to, to really look at what's going on. You know, Christ's exceptional love design is a very simple thing mm -hmm. in his love because it's founded on the first and second commandments and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So those three things are what makes this up, but it's our self-awareness of what's going on with what we've learned mm -hmm. that has been bad in the past yeah. or unhealthy. And then to relearn those things through Christ's love, and that's what changes everything. Yeah. So if you can, help us, just give us a highlight when you talk about Christ love design. What do you mean when you use that term? When I use that term, Christ's love, this, this is kind of what it looks like to me. So when we each are married, we, we come together, we're individuals, and we each have our broken love designs. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we get married and we actually get into this tug of wills mm -hmm. as to which design to use. So, well, yelling, as long as I apologize is okay. Well, no, it's not. You start <laughs> doing this, you know, yeah. back and yeah. forth thing. And so with Christ's exceptional love, when you're loving God first, and you're loving others as you love yourself, and you're and you're living in the fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, all those things as you work with God, what starts happening is as you individually do this, you start working with Christ and you start doing this. And so then what happens in your marriage is Christ is in the middle and it just becomes a strand of three threads that go up to Christ. Mm -hmm you know, and you're just becoming that one. So you're not doing this anymore. Right. 
you're becoming the one with Christ. Yeah. And I would think, Darla, most people watching think, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Yes. Okay, but like, how do I get there? Because everybody's <laughs> been yelling and screaming and throwing toasters and so, or hurling insults, right? Yeah. So what do we do when chaos, because you've lived through chaos. Oh, you've had three chaotic marriages. Yes. And I don't care what anyone says, divorce just can't be easy. I've heard people say, oh, it was a friendly divorce. And I think, I just don't know how, yeah, I just don't know how that could play out. It breaks God's heart. It yeah. breaks our hearts. It breaks our kids apart. Yeah. Divorce is horrible, but on the other side, God created divorce to protect women, especially, and it's never his will for us to submit to any abuse or any of those things, and there's help. So how do we go from yeah. crazy mm -hmm. to that beautiful thread? We have to do three big steps. The first one is to recognize we're living in a broken love design. What does that really mean? What What is my definition of love? Sit down and write that all out and figure out, you know, what you So like you're individually, doing. like when yeah, you're talking about self-awareness, sit yes. down and write this out. Okay. Write this out. And the only person you can work on is you. So this Amen. is number one. You know, figure out what you're doing. Then repent. Mm -hmm. Repent of the things you've done and said and attitudes. And the third thing is you've got to recommit your life to Christ and work together and, and go through a book like this. And I've created a workbook too, but yes. go through that yourself and see what's going on. But don't expect your spouse or order your spouse to do any of that. They've got to make that choice on their own. Absolutely. And as I know from personal experience, just because I chose to make that commitment and go forward doesn't necessarily mean your spouse is. Right. But the thing is, there's a so much better chance that they might. Amen. If we'll obey, Yes. And get that picture of health out there. Yes. And work on ourselves yes. with the whole help of the Holy Spirit. There is an increased chance yes. that our spouse will see that and latch on to it. And again, the book is Quest for Exceptional Love, and it's written by Dar Darla Collinette, who's my guest today. And it's about transforming your love and your relationships through Christ's love design. And I, I love it that you put a book together because a lot of people, Darla, don't have tons of money to do lots of counseling, right. but you've got, as you said, you've got the book and a workbook, which yes. is a great place to do the exercises and yes. to do that where people could get the benefit of lots of counseling in the privacy of their own home and just start to get that picture, yes. right, of what yes. health looks like. So you touched on this a little bit. You said sometimes people don't even know what like abuse looks like. What, what are some examples of abuse that we might not recognize if we were in a troubled relationship? Even in a Christian marriage, I've, um, so here's an example. You're in a restaurant and you're sitting with your husband and your husband's like, wow, that, that woman's really beautiful. Mm. And, and, and you just feel this pain, you know, yeah. and that's not okay. He's with you. How do you address that? you've got to look at that personally and, and tell what's going on. But I also see women degrading their husbands. Oh, absolutely. And saying, if you had a better job, if you did this, mm -hmm. if you were, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. then we would have this or right. I would be this. Right. It's, it's any time you're degrading or disrespecting your person, right. you know, then that's what it is. Yeah. It, and, you know, it's even in conflict. If we're oh. not, if we're not adding value. Right we're subtracting value from the entire relationship, just not from that person. And that person is so much less likely yeah. to do what's right and good if we're mistreating them. And I do think that abuse does go both ways. Yes, you oh, know, absolutely. There, there are women who are very cruel to their absolutely. husbands and just put them down, whether it's not an, um, like a good enough job or enough money, or you know, if you could be like so-and-so, mm -hmm. or to think that somehow your husband could possibly meet all of your needs. Yeah. Because, right, like even the most wonderful godly man, I mean, he's not Jesus. So, <laughs> you know, we can't like do all that. Like Amen. we can't expect someone to, you know, it. it's a lot of unrealistic and false expectations. Yes, it is. It is. I think one of the best things married couples, Christian married couples can do, if you are walking with Christ, then Christ lives in us. Mm -hmm. And that means every single one of us can learn to live in his love design. Yes. So what would happen if you looked at your spouse and you could see a hologram picture of Jesus over your spouse's face? 
because Jesus tells us what we do to each brother and sister we do to him. So the reality of that is mm -hmm. if you're my spouse and I'm cussing you out, guess what? I'm cussing Jesus out. Mm. And I think if we had that reality, uh -huh. because that is our reality, and one day we're gonna have to make account for that, how would our marriages be different? Exactly, exactly. And it would make it better for everybody, our kids, our spouse, and for our own lives. Amen. We are out of time, and I'm so sorry <laughs> about that. But thank you so much for coming and for sharing your story today, Darla. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. For more information on today's guest, visit the website on your screen. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. We talked today on Bridges about the quest for exceptional love. And all of us are probably on that quest in some form or fashion. And what's most important for all of us is that we allow Christ's love to fill our hearts because all of us live in a broken world and we all have broken places inside of our lives. And since God tells us to love him first and to love our neighbor as ourself, he makes it clear that love is the way that we show that we're his disciples and that we belong to him. And so what we do out of obedience to him is to allow him to fill those broken places. And what I hope that you understand after Darla's interview and the conversation today is that abuse is never okay. Whether that's physical abuse or emotional abuse, abuse is not okay with God. And if you're in a situation where you have those red flags or those cautionaries, I encourage you first to pray about it, then to find a safe person to talk to, maybe a Christian counselor, your pastor, trusted friend, and be honest about the situation and come up with a plan to keep yourself and your children, if you have them, safe. That is God's will for everyone. It is never God's will that any of us endure abuse time and time again. God loves us and he wants all of us whole. He wants us to be free to enjoy the life that he's given us. So I encourage you, if you're in that kind of a dark place, to find and to seek the help that you need so that you can live the life that God has planned for you and for your children. We are all out of time, so we've got to go right now, but I say goodbye and God bless you.